Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of PD and P Dubs Unscripted. As you see, I'm joined back by a regular co-host here, P Dubs. Hey, hey everybody, great to be with you, and great to be with you too, PD. Uh, it seems like it's been a minute. I know we were doing so good getting back in the habit and almost like bragging, boasting about. Yes. Look at us, we got three in a row. Oh, and then I we know. had a few weeks off, and then ministry life takes over, and then yeah, and then next thing you know, it's December. Right, it's already December third as we're recording this. Mm-hmm. And- well, I'm glad uh, for our audience' sake that you and Maggie got a chance to chit chat last week on matters uh, of the church and so forth. So, yeah, sure, the matters of the church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Macy's Day Parade, which I've never really watched. I don't know about you. I don't see you being a big Macy's Day Parade. Guy. I mean, growing up, I remember my mom putting it on, and I would I would watch it for a little while because that was the only time when I was a kid you'd see like the big floats and. Mm. Uh, New York always had underdog. Uh, oh. So you know me, an underdog. I love right. my underdog. So I'd look for him. And then, like, you'd see Santa, you know. Maybe. So, but, like, it probably intrigued me for, like, when I was a, a little, little guy. A little tyke. Yeah. And, but after that, I grew kind of, you know, too yeah. cool. And I didn't know there was a dog show on Thanksgiving. A dog show? No. Yeah, like a dog. No. Where, yeah, I don't oh, know. Oh, like... Uh, like Westminster, but not the Westminster. Oh, okay. I was like, that's football time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which, well, we don't need to talk about no, how that went no, for we, the we don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But yeah, so we thought, you know, since it's December, we're kicking off Advent. We just had Advent 1, mm-hmm. the first Sunday in Advent this past Sunday. Mm-hmm. And, and when you listen to this, if you're listening today, it comes out. It is our first midweek Advent service, and I'm sure our middle school kids are going to lead us in a great service for Advent. Looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, that first theme uh, of Advent is hope. Right. And, uh, boy, that's uh, something in our world. We all need that certain hope of Jesus Christ being our Savior. And uh, looking forward to the middle schoolers tomorrow. Delivering the goods. Right. They're going to do a great job. And yeah, just as you did a great job sharing about those signs and lucky charms on (laughs) Sunday. That was fun. Um, Yeah, I just kind of got a crazy idea and ran with it. And uh, for those who aren't aware of what we're talking about, uh, Jesus was talking about the sun, moon, and stars being signs of him coming again. And I couldn't help but think of lucky charms, the leprechaun. You know, pink hearts, yellow moons, orange stars, green clovers. So just had a little fun with cereals. Well, yeah, because like I said, when we were doing the worship meeting and you were up north, I was like, what is his sermon title? I'm like, (laughs) is this a reference to something? Because I'm clueless. Uh So then we're talking about something because I think Joe was asking, oh, I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure what he's preaching on. Yeah. So I Googled that and the first thing that came up was like, Lucky Charms. I was like, oh, it's the marshmallows and the Lucky Charms. (laughs) And I was just like, okay. Okay, still, where is he going with this? Where is he going? I'm yeah. like, Joe, I can't give you any help about what where yeah. he's going. He texted me Saturday, oh, anything you can give me, you know. So. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, it's a good time having fun with sermon titles. and Yeah, and this week, uh, this past week was uh, kind of an interesting one because we as uh, lectionarians, uh, just thought I'd throw that is big that word the, out. Is that the official word, lectionarians? Yeah, yeah we are the, uh, the triennium lectionarians. That yes. sounds like good Latin stuff, doesn't it? Latin's always good. Yeah. Um, but uh, this past Sunday, Advent 1, provided two gospel opportunities. Right, because there's so one So it's you... up to the preacher. Oh, man. So you had some choices because you had the one you preached on with the signs mm-hmm. or something that feels a little out of place for December. I feel this should be like springtime. Yeah. But Jesus' triumphant entry into the city for yeah, Palm Sunday. Doesn't it lend itself into Palm Sunday, kicking right. off, you know, the Passion Week? Right, but it's like I remember one year on Palm Sunday, and I, I know you'll remember the probably year better than I do, it was snowing on a Palm Sunday. And oh. I was preaching, and I was just like, I feel that I should be preaching about Christmas and not Palm Sunday. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to do the, the the opposite. Like, you know, if this text happens in December, you should preach some December text. It should text. be nice and warm outside. Yeah, right. Maybe you'd preach about, you know, Simeon. Ah, Simeon. You know, who, where we get the great nunc dimittis. Oh, yes. That will be coming up. That's another Latin word I just like throwing out there. Man, it makes me look a, like I know what I'm talking about. You are a Latin scholar, my no, friend. Oh, not at all. Not at all. I'm just a hack. Oh, don't sell yourself <laughs> short here. So, yeah, the triumphal entry, uh, you know, uh, as one of our uh, favorite pastors um, in uh, Western Illinois 
uh, you know, poses the question, what in the world are we doing reading about Palm Sunday in the middle, in the beginning of December? Right. It feels kind of out of place like we're hitting upon because, yeah, you don't think about that because you're thinking about, oh, Jesus coming. What are the things coming for Jesus is coming into this world as a baby when this is kind of like almost part of his exit out of the world. Yeah. Uh, so I can't help but have a little, you know, Jerry Seinfeld in my head. What's the deal with this reading? What's the deal? Yeah. So, you know, I don't know who created the lectionaries, but they had a reason for doing this. Yeah. So, um, it's too bad we can't like interact. I mean, it'd be great to hear, you know, your thoughts on this, but, um, uh, you know, certainly, uh, if we really boil down to what is the purpose of Advent is to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus. Right. And so, um, of what he is about to accomplish in, in his earthly life, going to the cross, dying, rising, ascending, uh, providing the way of salvation for us, and uh, being victory on the cross. So as we're looking forward to Jesus coming, uh, as our dear uh, colleague said, the sole purpose of Jesus coming into this world was to... Die. To die. And so... It is a triumphal entry because he is ready to accomplish the mission that was set forth from Genesis 3.15 about God sending the Savior into the world. Yeah, way to bring it back to the the proto-angelion. Oh, that, you know, that's a big word. Yeah, first gospel is what that means in Greek, I believe. Man, I don't know. I I'm feel, on a roll. You know, you give me a few days off, I'm, I'm cracking, you're, man. You've got a fresh brain. You're using these 25-cent <laughs> words, and I'm just like... He is way too smart for me, my friends. No, you're the doctor. I am I am just, you know, trying to stay up well, to speed. A, you use big words. I don't use big words. <laughs> <laughs> no, I go with what President Meyer always said when he in homiletics too when I had him for hom too was like Make sure it's simple enough for even the milkman to understand your sermon. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that is so true. And uh but uh, yeah, I'm throwing off these 25 cent words. But yeah, uh, for for those of our listeners, you know, thinking of like where the gospel is located in Scripture, certainly for you know uh, up and coming, maybe newer Christian, or maybe even someone who's been a Christian a while, they might think of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right, right the gospels. They're the books of the gospel. They're the, four, the, book, it's the, the good four, news. It's the four gospels. And uh, the beauty of the scripture that you showed was actually, it was gospel text as, uh, you know, coming out of the fall in the garden, Jesus, I'm not sorry, Jesus, God provides this promise of the Messiah to come. And that's good news. And that's one of those things too, like you think about, like, you're talking about gospel, that's always New Testament, law is just Old Testament, Mm -hmm. but there's law and gospel in both of the Testaments. Oh, yeah. So I know when we go through confirmation with the kids in their verse report, when I'm like, is this verse that they pick for their verse, I'm like, is it law or gospel? Sometimes they're like, come and haul, and they're like, ah, I don't really know. I'm like, well, here's the simple way. What does this boat send out when it's sinking? What type of signal? SOS. Mm. You no, know, the law shows our sin. Yep. Gospel shows our Savior. Yep. So the quick and easy way to determine if the text is gospel or law is just does it show our Savior or does it show our sin? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, a very nice, easy way to kind of keep it in our heads and a way for us to approach Scripture. So, yeah, so that's why, you know, um, you know, the triumphal entry is is really at play here. And maybe we could uh, just walk through it a little bit. Do you want to split up and read it, or yeah, do you have I, it available? I can get it here because uh, you're looking at Luke uh, 19. Luke 19. Uh, beginning at the 28th verse. Yeah, I got it pulled up here. So I could take it a little ways, and then you want to pick it up the rest? Sure. All right. So uh, verse 28, and when he, Jesus, had said these things, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord is in need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? 
And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice, and for the almighty work, for the mighty works that the, they would have seen, saying, Blessed is he, the King, who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the very stones would cry out. This is the gospel of our Lord. Mm. Thanks be to God. I love that that response. The very stones would cry out. Like if you were if you were to tell them to be quiet, the rest of creation will cry this out. Right. I mean, that's so cool. And what a power that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I bet it really like just shut their mouths, right? Like or just hack them off. Yeah, more. a little bit more. Yeah. So yeah, this um this whole Jesus coming from Bethpage and Bethany, which are just a, a small towns, just a couple miles out. And, um, and so he goes to the Mount of Olives where, you know, it was often a place of retreat for him to go to pray. Right. And that's always a good thing to have that place of prayer. And so can only imagine what the prayers, because he knew what was leading up to that week. Mm-hmm. And so to have that time. Yes. And, uh, that's good for us as um, believers in Jesus to know that as Jesus, who was laser focused on the cross at this point, took the time to come before his father in heaven uh, to prepare this final right. last week. And that is, you know, he's bringing that up. It's that great reminder for us because when we get laser focused on a task for our work or whatever it may be, we might almost forget that aspect because like, we need to lock in, as the kids like to say now, we got to lock in on this and just focus and hammer this out. But maybe the better idea is to take that second before we start and pray and ask mm. for God's wisdom and his guidance as we prepare. Because it doesn't have to be like a church-centered activity or something. Right. You can still ask for God's wisdom and guidance as you do something. Yeah, I mean, it could be for students who are getting ready to maybe present a project that or, they've been working on. Or the time of year, finals. Finals, yeah. Because could be uh, adults in their workplace. Like a deadline for a pro- work project. Mm-hmm. I, I do remember in my uh, consulting days and early on, I knew that I had to stand before a group of people, which, I mean, I was an accountant. I really didn't do that that much, if at all. And I was super nervous. I I was just learning the product, and I had to kind of tell people about the product. And I mean, my stomach was turning. And I remember that the night prior, I just sat down and prayed to God, like, because in my mind, I was psyching myself up that it wasn't going to go well, right? Because this is this is something completely different than what I've ever done in my career. Now I'm, I've kind of changed directions and I'm doing this. And so I took the, the time the night before and just prayed to God asking for his blessing. And you know what? It turned out awesome. I mean, I walked out of there so pumped up that it went as well as it did. And I don't know what made it go as well as it did. I think not the content that I gave, but maybe the response and the confident the, the 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 people asking questions and I was able to answer them in a manner that seemed satisfactory to them. Right. So I I remember going home that day just really thanking and praising God because I felt like, wow, you know, time alone with him really really blessed this. And I think that speaks to like you know, you could have taken that time to maybe focus more in and like get it more in your head what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. But this shows that that time with God was more important because it's probably whether you realize or not, maybe that trusting in the Holy Spirit that He's just going to lead what you say, especially as you say they're asking questions. You couldn't have prepared for those questions. You no. don't know where they're going to come from. And I think that was my greatest fear was like, what if they ask me a question I don't know the answer? Because like you can't, you can't, well, you can try and 
like fudge it a little, but somewhere someone's going to know something. Right. You're going to have the word salad where people are like, oh, he's just rambling on. Mm -hmm. He really doesn't know. Yep. Yep. So it's really great to see Jesus who's ready to enter humanly the most difficult thing that any human being could undergo. I mean, I know he's God, but but you have to check in and spend time in a right. place where he prayed often, you know. Right. And like and that's that comfort like of that area. Like is it the war room or one of those Christian films by the people that did uh the one we the the forge? Oh yeah. But they had one I think was it the war room yes. where the old lady had her kind of set yes, room where she always right. goes and prays and mm-hmm. it's almost like that home field advantage. Like mm-hmm. there's a comfort there. Yeah. Yeah. And so now they go get the cult, the cult, and uh, just as as it should be, they find it just as Jesus told them. They're willing to give it along here, um, and so uh, they bring it to Jesus, throwing their cloaks on the cult and their cloaks on the road, uh, preparing that royal highway. Right, like we think of, um, you know, a voice cries out, "Prepare the way of the Lord." in the prophet and uh that that's you know the king is coming it's a triumphal entry right and you know they were all thinking it was that earthly king little mm-hmm. did they know that his kingdom's not of this earth but that's what they were shouting those praises for and laying those cloaks down like you know anytime palm sunday comes up i just think of praise that we might see as we were talking about macy's day parade mm-hmm. but here you know maybe we're more you've seen a fourth of july parade or a homecoming parade for a high local high school where there is all that pomp and circumstance. Yeah, yeah. And that celebratory attitude, which we see here. But I you always wonder, what's going through Jesus' mind during this? Because he yeah, knows right. that these shouts of joy aren't going to stay that way mm-hmm. and what lies ahead. Well, and you bring up a good point about the pomp and circumstance. Like, you know, the dignitaries in any parade, they're, they're, they're high up. And they're on a special, well, nowadays, a special vehicle. Maybe has their name on the side with a banner or something. But even back in this time, like when a king would come, he, you know, they would prepare a royal highway, like they would raise up the ground and he would come in on his stallion or his steed, right? So like right. everybody could have eyes on him. Here he comes. Right. And so this, it, it's kind of even like a pittance of a, of a way, but it's what they had, right? They're laying the, they're laying the robes down, right. you know, so this shows royalty. It shows, you know, he's respected. Even though he's on a cult, which yeah. isn't a royal animal. Mm-hmm. No, not at all. Um, but I think of like uh, one of our members, Audrey, who got the blessing to oh. be kind of a dignitary in the, the Barrington the, Parade. Right. And, uh, you know, just seeing her, um, you know, so happy. It, happy and being honored and so forth. And uh, hearing the story from her daughter, Cheryl, about how she was just really loving it. Um, it's kind of what you recall when you think right. of something like this, some, you know, people cheering. And what I think of is like Jerusalem, such a big city. These people kind of, I think these were Jesus followers who were following him from Bethany and Bethpage down and then they picked up some more people uh in the city who joined them and there's this big hoopla going on and it seems like the only ones who really are caring or bothered by it are the jewish leaders and isn't that always the case with jesus like they catch what what he's doing Mm -hmm. and it just hacks them off and they get all angry yeah and you know because what is he doing? He's blaspheming. He's taking credit where it's not due and, you know, and leads them to what we know happens by the end of this week. Right. And, and I wonder, you know, with the city being as big as it is, I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of noise and a lot of cheering, but, but, but was it really noticed right. by the townspeople or the, the leaders of the town? Or is it just these guys who are honed in on Jesus? Right, because it's not like they have, like, nowadays texting or social media yeah. where, like, you can get news instantly. Like, you know, I was talking about going downtown on Friday on the train, and I was, like, scrolling my in- my Twitter. I'm like, have the Bears fired Matt Eberflus? Mm. Are they going to fire? Mm-hmm. What's, oh, the press conference is a little delayed. Is this a sign? And I was like, and then he does it. I was like, okay, they're keeping them status quo, typical Bears. And then a little bit later, I looked at my phone, and somebody texted me, you know, hey, 
bears fired Eberflus. Mm -hmm. And that person, you know, AJ, who's been on our show, Mountain Prospect area, Chicago, that's miles away. Mm -hmm. But how quickly it is to share that news instantly. And uh, they didn't have that type of technology in that day and age where it has to be all word of mouth and you have to travel to get that news there. It's not like you can be miles away and send it instantly to somebody. And it wasn't like an annual parade, like the Macy's Day Parade, like right. where everybody was already waiting. Right. And so, like, and there was no signs. Oh, the Jesus Parade is coming. Right. You know? You know, when you think about, like, an impromptu parade, you don't really see those happening. Would, no. Of, like, ooh, how many people are going to show up? Uh-huh. And even sometimes, like, even here we don't see many people are parade. Like, not that it's a parade, but I think of, like, when we're outside for the 9-11 thing mm. that our Palatine does. Right. There's not many people lining the streets for that. No. No. If it weren't for our school, I, it, it's just the people who are at the final, you know. Stop. The stop uh, at the memorial that. Because there's nobody lying in the street. No. And so that's a good point. But um, so, yeah, so Jesus is riding on the on the colt. Um, and now here is interesting. Is there mention of palm branches in, in Luke's? No, only John. Because uh-huh. actually, because I think I preached a little bit about that the week you were up north. Okay. Because I was talking about how, you know, I was preaching off Revelation here. Let's see here. Was it Revelation or something I was preaching where they talked about... Revelation 7? Yeah, and how the John mentions the palm branches. Yes, he does. And he's the only gospel that mentions palm branches, so kind of connecting those two celebrations. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we've come to know that the waving of a palm branch denotes like a victory. Of sorts, oh, right? Yeah, that was Palm or not Palm Sunday, All Saints Sunday. When All I Saints, talk, I know. I thought I'm like I thought I heard you say this, but if I was up north, it must have been through osmosis. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like <laughs> the sermons kind of blur together, but that's I'm like I know I just preached about that, and yeah. so it's All Saints Day when because I was trying to look at my notes here, I was like, no, I didn't preach Revelation. Yeah, yeah. So so they're they're waving palm branches, kind of like here's our king, he's victorious, and like we've talked before, people had a different understanding of the kingship of Jesus. Um, I'm sure many didn't think he was coming in to die, right? You know, um, no, because you think about any ruler, like a conqueror, you're not thinking, oh, they're coming in to die; they're coming in to celebrate their conquests, their victories, mm-hmm. and this is complete opposite, which is. The case with everything with Jesus. You look at his birth that we're getting ready to celebrate this mm-hmm. advent preparing for. It doesn't have a lot of pomp and circumstance. It's a very lowly, you know, connecting with Palm Sunday, riding in on a lowly do- colt. Mm. He came in and was born in a lowly manger. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And well, kind of as you tie it to the birth narrative of Jesus, um, and, and maybe we, we could look back to Jesus' birth in Luke. But in verse 38, where they were all saying in a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And now this is uh, kind of what calls me back to the birth narrative, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So these are people saying glory to God in the highest, whereas in the birth narrative, it was the angels. Right. The Luke 2, 14, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among those whom he is pleased. Yes. So both are glory to God in the highest. And um, so I guess that's the Gloria in Excelsis Deo right oh, there. Look at you go with some more Latin terms. <laughs> I just love that Christmas hymn. In Excelsis Deo. And I remember as a kid here at Emmanuel, our teacher, Tom Lorenz, you know, we'd be up there doing what the kids are now practicing, and we'd sing Gloria. And you go, you got to say it like this in eggshell seas, Deo, eggshell seas. And so as a kid, I'm like, what? why are we singing about eggshells and seas? <laughs> had no idea for the longest time. So do you still say it that way? Eggshell seas, yes. So, yeah, maybe this Christmas you'll hear me say it and you'll kind of chuckle. That and watermelon. Water. <laughs> hey, that's a secret. That's a pastoral secret. Oh. Uh, we'll edit Don't give that. it away. We'll edit that out. Yeah. But, yeah, Egg Shelsies. Thank you, Mr. Lorenz. Um, he is sainted Mr. Lorenz. So, yeah, glory to God in the highest. So, this is um, 
Now it is it is mankind um, saying peace in heaven, whereas the angel said peace on earth. Right. Isn't that ironic? It's like uh, kind of a uh, opposite kind of message saying the same thing. Right, but pretty soon we know Jesus will be in heaven. Mm-hmm. And uh, certainly the coming week will not be peaceful in the no. least. It no. will be anything but. Right. So, what does that say? It's like, um, hmm. sometimes the things we, we, we lift up don't really correlate to the events that occur. Right. So, in this case, they're shouting, you know, peace, of, peace in heaven, but you know, on earth it will be chaos. anything but, yeah, it'll be chaos. But in the end... Because of the work of Jesus, who justified us on the cross and reconciled right. us, there will be peace in heaven, right? right. Like, so it, it, that, in the end, all it is right that day that awaits us. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it, good stuff here for sure. And um, so, it, it 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 does seem appropriate, doesn't it, PD? That that we are reminded of this occurrence. Right. It it fast forwards us to the end of Jesus' earthly life, but yet in the beginning of Advent, which means coming, uh, we get to right to the purpose, like to die. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like Advent's not just preparing for Christ's first coming; it's ultimately preparing for when He's going to come back again in mm-hmm. that final judgment. Yeah, and we don't know when that's going to be, so we just need to be prepared and. That's for where we can help prepare the way for people so that they can be prepared for Jesus' second coming so it doesn't catch them off guard. Kind of as you are talking about this, like, Palm Sunday parade, like, was it just a pop-up parade? You know, the people didn't, they didn't have it on their calendar, like, oh, Jesus is coming to town, mm-hmm. better, get my, better go get my palm branches ready. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, same with Jesus coming back again. We don't know when we it's going to be. So we better be ready. And and won't we say the same thing? Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. He's he's the victorious king who's going to come again in his name. And and I love how Paul always says, Philippians 2, well, he only said it once, but I love reading it always, that, that every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so, like, that's what's going to happen when he comes again. Right. And so there's really no reason for us as believers in Jesus to fear this um, because it is it is the blessed assurance that what he's done is has stuck and it's it's victorious. Right, and that victory is our victory now. Mm-hmm. Well, so. thanks everybody for letting us kind of walk through this with you. It's been good to get back into the studio, and uh, I know we've made some adjustments to our sound, so hopefully we're sounding a whole lot nicer. And uh, but uh, we're always thankful for PD and his editing prowess. Uh, he was mm-hmm. keeping us going for a, for as best as he could with the the well, issues that we had. Yeah, thankful that I don't have to do that, and we <laughs> yeah. sound like a million bucks again. Yeah. All right. God's blessings. PD and P Dubs, unscripted.